uh, I am, uh, I guess I'm known, I guess the reason you think I'm known, has anyone seen Dragon's Den? There's a show in Ireland called Dragon's Den. I'm, I was selected to be on Dragon's Den. A couple of people have seen it. Yeah, so, but uh, actually what I was known for before that was for uh, coining the firm, uh, phrase cloud computing and also uh, cre creating street maps on, on computers where you type an address into a computer and you see a, a map. Uh, but I'm known for, for Dragon's Den, so there you have it. Um, what I do these days is I run a company, a technology company in Conceal. We're trying to create a, a big revolution in how people get around. Um, we call it what we do, revolutionary trans uh, mobility. And I'm going to try to get this keyed up here. So, um, so uh, I'll just give you a, a little bit of a viewpoint on uh, what Avego does. Avego, by the way, uh, Ave is from uh, the Latin for hail, and go is like uh, go. So hail and go, it's like hailing a, uh, hailing a cab and going. The concept uh, behind Avego is taking cars and making cars into buses, and you'll see what, what that's about. But we also do several other types of efficient uh, transport methods, such as van pooling um, and uh, you know, real-time uh, passenger information systems uh, for multimodal travel. But I'd like to start with a, a brief quote uh, from Buckminster Fuller. So this is a quote It says, um, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Never change things by fighting the existing reality to change something. Build a new model, make the existing model obsolete. And if we think about the, the truly massive changes that have happened in our lifetimes, and there's been plenty of them from cell phones and computers and, and uh, you know, communications, mobile phone, you're, you know, uh, all, all types of cloud computing, all types of things that have changed. Uh, we have to acknowledge that, that they happen in these radical ways, these, these revolutionary ways. And so we can think the life is just gonna go along like one of these lines on a, bars on a bar chart or, or lines on a line graph. But in fact, there's these, these fundamental disruptions that, that occur when, when systems are reinvented. And that's what I think we have to uh, seize on for, for the transport um, uh, sector as well, is to recognize that in transport uh, we have, uh, we can use technology to radically change what we do. Avego is known for three different types of technology, real-time ride sharing, uh, where we have, we're the world leader in that technology. Uh, we have projects in five cities in the US and uh, in uh, Europe as well. Van pooling, where we uh, provide all the information technology for the world's largest van pooling company. And uh, we do some things. We're not a world leader in the, the bus uh, information systems, but we do some projects here in Europe and in China and the U.S. Just a, a brief uh, note. You know, when you came here today, if you came, came from far, you, you uh, probably packed a bag, and you probably filled that bag. You, you took a big ba bag that was big enough to, to carry your things, and that was the biggest bag that you took. But that's not what we do when we drive uh, our, our vehicles uh, down the roads. We Actually, all these vehicles are, are pretty, pretty much empty. Only 1.1 seats is filled, or 1.15 seats is filled in the average car during rush hour. The road is full, so we fill up the road, but the road is actually completely empty uh, because there's, there's just so much wasted excess capacity in all those vehicles. So, um, you know, that's a problem, of course. It's a problem because uh, we have... Uh, a lot of people, oops, I'm just gonna go back there, I didn't realize it was building. Um, a lot of people are added to the globe every day. Uh, if you take the number of people who are born versus the number of people that die, I call those net new subscribers to life. Um, that, that's about 280,000 people every single day. So, you know, that's you know, something the size of, uh, you, know, you know, Cork or, you know, a couple, a couple of those will make a Dublin in, after f three or four days, five days you'll have a, a, a major city added to the globe. And all of those people obviously uh, use energy, and that's a problem. Um, so infrastructure, you know, everyone's just saying, okay, we can build all the infrastructure we need, uh, but they can't keep pace with it, because of course, what happens is you've, it fills up. So um, we know that transportation is, is a cause of global warming. Uh, you know, one third of all the global warming gases are from the transport sector, and we also know lots of other data, I'm sure it's already been covered. Uh, here. 
But you know, I guess what uh, these rising petrol prices are doing for people is it's making people aware that actually, you know what, I don't need to just do what I was doing yesterday. I can actually change my behavior. There was something that was, um, and let's just look at in the transport sector. There's a nice quote from this guy uh, from Shell, actually. Uh, he says, um, oil and transport are inextricably linked. To manage oil demand, we have to get a grip on the transport system. So before, uh, you know, even just uh, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, uh, when you took a, uh, a barrel of oil, 41% of it or so was used for transport. Now 61% of that is used for transport. More and more of a barrel of oil is not used for whatever, creating plastics or creating, uh, you know, ener you know uh, burning it for energy or anything like that. It's, it's, we're getting the maximum amount we can out of it just to, to use the transport sector. So oil is about transport and transport only. So how do you manage transport? Right? So if you want to get, if we've got a problem with supply on oil, we have to manage transport. You know, inextricable link. So, so that is our challenge, managing how we do our transport and we can manage the, the issue of demand on, on oil. And so, you know, here's, here's a couple of ways uh, that, that people do uh, increased, well, this is actually talking about global warming gases, but it's somewhat related. So domestic air travel, just, you know, flying around uh, short flights, uh, burns the largest amount of CO2 per passenger per kilometer traveled. But surprisingly, you know, the average car with just a person and a half or, or a person in it um, actually is not much worse than the average bus. Now, all forms of public transit are actually better than a single person driving a single occupancy vehicle, but um, it's not much better, you know, for, for a bus. And all you need to do to beat all forms of public transport is to put three people in that car. So a three-person carpool is more efficient than any rail system or any form of public transport. A van pool is twice as efficient as that, where you have 12 or, 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 or more people in a, in a van. So, you know, so if we're thinking about this, if we want to manage our, our energy uh, use and all these global warming things and oil use, then we have to manage transport, then we have to be thinking about, okay, what are we doing with all those wasted seats? So, you know, if it's, it's, I'm all in favor of, of bus travel and public transport, but it's funny that the most efficient thing you can do is efficient private transport. And that, of course, is also the cheapest thing you can do because you don't have to build a lot of infrastructure or pay for a lot of uh, overhead. For example, like in, in the United States, it costs, and, I, and that, that would be more efficient the, in terms of the cost than the bus system here in uh, many parts of Europe and in Ireland in particular. But in the United States, it costs about $175 per hour uh, to run a bus. So it doesn't cost, and, and if you're running a bus with eight passengers on it or something, that, that's extraordinarily inefficient. You're burning through a lot of cash to, to, to keep the people uh, uh, you know, to get p people from place to place. But if you can use the existing, I mean, 85% of people take a car. I mean, does anyone here own a car? Probably quite a few. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, 85% of people actually take car, uh, you know, take the car for, for the commute. Maybe not so in Dublin. Uh, almost 50% of people in, in Dublin actually take, uh, don't, don't drive, or uh, do, do occasionally use public transport. So, so, but, uh, but it is extraordinarily common for people to use uh, private transport. What we have to do is just rethink and reimagine and reinvent how we're using our private transport. If we can take our cars and make our cars buses, if we can get three people in each car or two people in each car, then we, we're doing much better than not. So um, it's, what we're talking about actually is behavior change before I go to the next one. Uh, and behavior change, is, um, is possible. It is actually possible, and it's highly price elastic. If we look at what we did uh, here in Ireland uh, on, with recycling, I, don't, I wish I could just uh, re recall the numbers every time, but it, every time it's so mind-bogglingly stunning. I wish I just had the numbers on my head. Probably some of you probably know. But before there was sort of a, 
you know, uh, 15 years ago or something, uh, people used to throw out the garbage in Ireland. Now they don't. So now they break their garbage up into two piles, the recycling and the, and the garbage. They pay a higher rate in general for the garbage or they, and they give away, you know, in some places, like where I live, you, you don't pay anything for the recycling and you pay a lot more for, for, the, uh, for the garbage. And if you take your recycling, to, people go to all efforts to save money. And as a result, before we had, you know, every household would throw out everything. And so that's, there was 100% of the output was all garbage. Now it's like 70% is recycling and 30% is garbage. So it is possible for people to make radical changes in their behavior. It, and often it's possible just by simply changing the pricing mechanism. So, uh, so, so that's what, uh, what our system is, is trying to help encourage. Um, and uh, so we have a system for carpooling. Um, and the, the traditional carpooling in the United States, for example, which is a, a big energy user, carpooling is used more commonly than all forms of public transit combined, rail, subway, bu bus, whatever. Um, that's good, and that's, that's, that's very efficient, but there's lots of disadvantages. People have you know, fixed lifestyles if they want to always be sharing a, a, a car. There's something called van pooling in the United States, which isn't used here in Ireland, but should be as, as energy rice prices. If energy prices continue to rise and people start to notice what a, a liter of petrol costs, they may consider something like van pooling in, in, uh, here in Ireland. So, um, you know, it's, it's the most efficient form of, of, of passenger transport that exists, in fact. Um, uh, and we, uh, we provide all the information systems for the world's largest van pooling provider, uh, Avego, we, we're based here in Kinsale, uh, but we have offices in other parts of the world. And, uh, and we have some technology that helps make it, make it more popular, make it expand uh, more rapidly for those, for those companies that do van pulling. Um, there's other things like internet ride sharing services. Uh, I won't talk about those, they're pretty, they're pretty great. Uh, slugging is a way of, actually, has anyone ever heard of slugging? Do you know what slugging is? Okay. So this, is, um, this was made popular both in San Francisco and Washington, D.C. by a public bus strike uh, you know, in both of those areas at different times. So uh, the bus service stopped, but the people who were using the buses still needed to get to work. So uh, people uh, just pulled over. At the, people still waited at the bus stops, and people sort of uh, you know, self-organized themselves, and they, they jumped into cars, and they use the cars like buses. And they still do the system today. And tens of thousands of people in California, in, in San Francisco, and in Washington, DC, do this. And they do it only for one reason uh, in, in those cities, uh, which is they, uh, they, there's something called HOV lane, high occupancy vehicle lane, rather than SOV, single, single occupancy vehicle. So if you're in a high occupancy vehicle uh, lane, which is separate, with two or more passengers, in some cases three or more passengers, you just get to soar down the highway at, at 50, 60 miles an hour because nobody's in there, those lanes. Because as I said, there's only 85% of people are just driving in their single occupancy vehicle cars. So, so that is a massive incentive. And that's why thousands of people wait, uh, wait and share their cars every day for no other economic benefit. Is, is just uh, for, but it is, a, it is a substantial economic and time uh, benefit. Um, and so we're, we're, what Avego's trying to do is just making slugging happen just in more areas around the world more quickly and by allowing people to dynamically create slugging environments even if the bus workers don't go on strike or even if, you know, uh, even if they've never had a bus service in that particular part of the world. So what we're really trying to do with uh, Avego is to make every road part of the transit network by taking every car and making every car a bus. So I'll just give you a very brief thing. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. I'm sorry, I didn't think about hooking up the sound. But hopefully you'll be able to hear this little uh, video. Driving alone is costly, both for the planet and for your pocket. But for many people, there are no viable alternatives that take them from where they live to where they work. Passenger up ahead. With Avego's iPhone app, you can turn your car into a bus and offer your empty seats in real time to potential riders along your route, 
extending the reach and frequency of public transport options for commuters. Anyone can get a ride using a mobile phone or online and receive the information they need to travel in confidence. A vehicle guides the driver to a convenient pickup point and provides the rider with a one-time PIN code as the driver approaches to verify identity and authorize cashless payment. Avego automatically shares the cost of the journey between the driver and rider, saving everyone time and money. Avego combines the freedom and convenience of cars with the efficiency and economy of public transport, organically expanding the network as new riders and drivers join up. And by reducing the number of people who drive alone, you're helping save the planet. Join the shared transport revolution with Avego. Uh, there's benefits to it, uh, lots of benefits because it's very flexible um, and it takes uh, existing cars uh, and makes them uh, available to everyone uh, if they have an app in them, whether it's on whatever smartphone it's on. Um, there's disadvantages too. It's actually hard to generate enough of a critical mass in any community to make a system take off. Um, and we've, uh, you know, we're still at the very early stages of trying to develop these critical mass communities. Uh, but we found some success. We did uh, the city of San, uh, Seattle last year. Uh, they, they paid Avego uh, to come in and try to popularize their system, paid us a couple hundred thousand dollars to light up a corridor in, uh, in between Redmond and Seattle. And we had thousands of people sign up and hundreds and hundreds of people sharing their cars uh, you know, with strangers uh, and, uh, and, it, and making the, 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 uh, proving that the concept works. From that, uh, in 2012, we've had five new pilots that have come up, uh, three different cities in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, Santa Barbara, and Washington, D.C., as well as Bergen in Norway, actually, uh, which is uh, very progressive uh, in Europe. And uh, so it's expanding. It's very, still much, very much at the early stages, but we're hoping to have hundreds of thousands of people uh, in, in the next year or so be using the system. So it'll take many years. It'll take, you know, when I, when I started the mapping thing, where you type an address into a computer, it took seven years for the first million people to, to use that technology. But it only took 20 years for the first billion people to use the technology, and only two years more for the second billion people to use the technology. So if you wait long enough, if you give yourself enough time, and if you stay at it, and you're persistent, and you keep improving it, the world actually can change, and you can have an impact on it. So uh, I think that's probably all I really needed to say. I can say more. But uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, uh, having me.